There are a number of advanced variants of minimum at a distance that play a special role in computational biology. So recall that in computational biology, what we're aligning is sequences of nucleotides or sometimes proteins. And our job is to take um, two strings like this and produce an alignment like this. So in biology, this is important for a number of reasons. We can be um, finding regions in the, in the um, genome. We could be discovering functions of genes. We could be looking for evolutionary things by comparing different species. Um, this is also important for um, assembling fragments, so DNA sequencing. We're going to be trying to assemble fragments, and we want to look for overlapping um, pieces. We'll talk about overlapping pieces and find some matches between them. Um, find that these two pieces match. Um, and we're comparing individuals and looking for mutations, finding places where there are similarities and differences. Um, in general, in natural language processing, we talk about distance, the string edit distance and minimum edit distance. So we're minimizing distance and we're um, computing um, weights for things. Um, in computational biology, we're talking about similarity, so we're maximizing similarity, so we're asking how similar two things are, so we're trying to maximize something, and we generally talk about scores rather than weights. So in computational biology, the um, standard minimum meta distance algorithm that we've just looked at um, is called needleman wunsch and I've shown you the, um, the algorithm here, but it's the same, um, the same thing that we saw before, uh, although in general we're just going to keep um, we'll use D to mean the cost of insertions and deletions, and we'll have a little S value for the um, substitution, the positive or negative value of substituting things. And in general, in biology, we'll talk about a positive cost for things that match, a positive um, uh, value for things that match, and a cost for things uh, for deletions and insertions. So here's the um, needleman wunsch matrix, and um, notice that as opposed to what we did in natural language processing, in general, in computational biology, we put the origin at the upper left. So let's, let's first look at some variants that are important in computational biology. So one is um, cases where it's possible to have unlimited gaps at the beginning and end of a string. And this happens exactly when we have two little snips of DNA, and we know that the endpoints of one might overlap with the ends of another, but there might be something else going on um, in other places. So um, here's one long sequence, and here's another long sequence, but it's just this piece of, of this sequence and this piece of this that might overlap. So we don't want to penalize the fact that there's other things going on before here or after here. So we'd like to modify the algorithm so it doesn't penalize gaps at the end. And in fact, there can be various different kinds of overlapping of this of this sort. Um, this might happen when we're when we're doing sequencing and we have overlapping reads, um, or it might be that we're looking for a piece of a gene inside another piece, um, and so we have a subset piece inside a larger piece. So the variant of the dynamic programming algorithm that we use um, for overlap detection, the overlap detection variant. Um, we'll just make a few small changes um, in the algorithm. So first, um, uh, we just change the initialization so that um, it doesn't cost us anything to um, start from a long string and delete everything or insert everything. So it used to be that we had um, we had minus i minus i star d here and we had minus j star d here. And we've gotten rid of those because it's, we're allowing ourselves to start at a path at a random point way out here in the intersection. So we're, we're um, allowing ourselves um, to start at zero cost here and not be penalized for not matching all these things up till here. So we're looking for, again, edge overlaps. Um, and now, um, for our uh, termination condition, we're going to look for the um, start from not from the upper right corner because we're allowing a match not to go all the way to the edge, but we'll find the, um, the place along the final column or the final row where we have the maximum value and we'll trace back from there. 
So in this case, our maximum value is here in this last column, and we'll trace back from there. Um, a similar extension of the uh, Needleman Wunsch or the standard dynamic programming algorithm for string at a distance is the local alignment problem. So here's the, the local alignment problem. We have two strings, x of length m and y of length n, and we want to find two substrings whose similarity is maximum. So imagine that here's x and here's y. We'd like to, out of this, um, these two strings, we'd like to find these two, um, these substrings, ccc, ggg, that's the largest um, similar substring. Um, so it's, it's very similar to the um, overlap detection variant we saw, except not only do we allow ourselves not to, to ignore previously um, unaligned sequences at the beginning and end, but also anywhere. So we, we can basically have our maximum alignment be somewhere in the middle um, as it is here. So in order to, um, the, the, in order to modify the needleman wunsch algorithm um, to allow um, any kind of local alignments, this is the new version is now called the Smith-Waterman algorithm, and we're first going to allow, um, as we did for the um, overlap detection variant, um, allow um, the initialization conditions to be zero both for x and y, so we don't penalize ourselves for initial strings. And now we're going to make one more modification, which is that in each cell, when we're looking at the possible um, um, places we could come from to choose the alignment, we're going to not only pick um, the maximum of the three previous cells, but we're also going to add a maximum of zero. So we're going to let ourselves, since in, um, uh, in biology we're talking about maximizing similarity, when things get very different and we have a very negative score, we're just going to start all over again from zero, allowing ourselves to just throw away regions that don't align at all. The termination condition of the Smith-Waterman algorithm um, uh, depends on what we're looking for. If we just want the best local alignment, we'll pick the place that's, that's um, maximum in the entire array, and we'll trace back from there. If we want all the local alignments that score greater than some threshold t, then maybe we'll find some place that's greater than t, um, find all those places and trace back all of them. Now this gets complicated by the fact that there can be overlapping local alignments. So here's, we might have two alignments like this, and, um, and it might be that they actually overlap tracing back. So there can be some complications here. But if you want the best local alignment, that's actually much easier. So here's an example of local alignment. So let's let's imagine that we're 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 getting one positive point every time two symbols match and a negative point for any deletion, insertion, and substitution. And then let's look for all the local alignments between these two strings, A T C A T and A T T A and A T C. And if we fill in the matrix, again we start with zeros everywhere because we're doing local alignment. Um, we see um, two, if we then look for regions, uh, cells that have a maximum distance to trace back from, we see two of these cells. So one of them corresponds to the alignment ATCAT -AT to ATTAT. -AT. So we have four strings that match, one mismatch, so that's going to be a distance of three. And the other one of them over here corresponds um, to um, the alignment between ATC and ATC, where we have three matching uh, symbols. So those are some of the uh, more advanced variants of edit distance that we see in computational biology.